Father, your people will become quality people in the name of Jesus Christ. Confirm this word in the lives of everybody that is listening. Amen. And everybody says amen. So let's 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 go into this. It's not so much of a of I will not be jumping up and down and doing any gymnastics this morning. But I believe that as we progress, uh, you know, in the word of God, we need to start to teach. Uh, certain things, especially in the African church and in the African context where, uh, you know, a lot of things were being acceptable even if they were substandard. But we want to go and understand that God wants us to be a person of quality, a person of quality. God wants you to be a person of quality. So let us first define what quality is. And when you're talking about quality, um, I I live with a person that loves quality. My wife is a person that loves quality. Everything that she does is quality. She loves quality clothes. She loves quality meals. And and I have grown to 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 and and you know she has she has wrapped that thing of desiring and wanting things that are of high quality. And 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 every time we are always talking about quality, we are, we are when holding this mic, it's it it has to be a quality mic. This is definitely. It's a, it's a show mic, and, and, and in the past when we started, we were using Jingzhong mics, and, and they used to give us problems. You know, those mics, when you are speaking, they make that noise, and, 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 you know, and all those kind of things. And, and so, so, so you also want a quality phone. You want a quality phone. You, you want a quality meal. You, you want a quality chair. You want quality furniture. You want quality uh, 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 TV. You want quality everything. You want quality. You want quality education. You want quality church. But today I'm also going to be talking about being a quality person. Being a quality person. And, and that's what God actually desires more, that each one of us becomes a person of quality. So what is quality? Let's define that. Let's define that. Let's define what quality is. So quality is the standard of something as measured against other things of, of similar kind or the degree of excellence of something. So which means that when I'm talking about quality, I am comparing. I am comparing apples to apples. Uh, I am comparing this mic to other mics. I am comparing, uh, you know, um, I'm comparing the results that I'm producing to other results that are being produced by people. I'm comparing cars to cars. So, so when you buy a Mazda 323 and you buy uh, a, a Mercedes-Benz, the smallest uh, Mercedes-Benz or the entry point Mercedes-Benz, they are all cars, but the quality is different. The quality is different. So it is the standard of how something is measured. And I want to say to you that every day when you present yourself to the human family, you are being rated according to your quality. Whatever you do, you are being rated according to the quality that you are exposing, that you are exuberating, that you are displaying. You are, you are, you are a level of quality. There's a level of quality that you are displaying. Number two. Quality, what is quality? Quality is a distinctive attribute or characteristics possessed by someone or something. So when you're talking about quality and we say that this thing is of quality, we have already established that we are comparing that thing to something else. But what are we comparing is a spe specific characteristic or specific attribute that that thing possesses. So what I'm saying that if you are going to become a person of quality, there are attributes and characteristics that are a must, that are non-negotiables, that you must have and you must possess. And um, what, what, and, 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 and it is the next uh, definition of quality is that it's something of value uh, in relation to what, uh, you know, what, the value that a thing brings in relation to its created or intended purpose. So, so you are judged on your quality based on your level of performance, uh, 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 being, being judged on what you are supposed to do and what you are supposed to achieve. In the world of 
of commerce or in the world of, of business, quality is measured uh, in different ways. There are multiple ways where quality is then looked at. For example, you can look at the quality of a product, which is called product quality. It's a type of quality. And the question there is, does it fulfill what the intention or the intended purpose of its creation? So the purpose of this mic uh, was, was, was uh, is, 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 is this mic fulfilling what it was created to fulfill? And am I getting, uh, is it also fulfilling customer expectations or needs? So when you're talking about product quality, and I'm sure in Zimbabwe we know very well because we have had a lot of things coming from China. We have had solar panels that come from China. They are brand new, but they will not last three months. And, and you are told that six, 12, six, 12 months guarantee, but before 12 months, that thing is not working, the battery is flat, that thing is, is broken. We have, we have seen that. Now, I've got nothing against China because I know that China also produces uh, good quality. It's just that our merchants in this country, they go and get the cheap things and then they sell it at a high price here. So, but when you're talking about product quality, you're talking about reliability. Is this product reliable? Is this product safe? Is this product, uh, you're also talking about maintainability. You're talking about its refinement. Uh, you know, when you're talking in the world of cars, Toyota generally in Africa are the strongest cars that we see around. They, they last longer than a Peugeot or uh, in, the, in our vernacular Peugeot, you know, but uh, uh, so, so, so we have to understand that. And, and you can also look at quality in terms of service quality, I, I, I'm coming and I'm working in, in a place where we are forcing and we are driving for quality service because now the customer will vote with their feet and they will vote and move away from you and go and buy from somebody and get that product from somebody else. So the customer experience becomes very key. But that has to do with quality service. It has to do with availability, accessibility. It has to do with the environment that that service is being given. All these things have become key in the world of commerce. But I also want to say that this is also key in your own personal world. You, you, you. And, and when you're talking about in, in, in the world of commerce, there's also uh, you know, a type of quality that is needed, which, is, which I call data quality. And uh, in the organization that I work for, we are pushing for digital transformation, where everything must become digital. And one of the key things and paramount things is that there needs to be quality data. And the data, when you're talking about quality data, you're talking about the accuracy of the data. You're, you're looking at the completeness, the accessibility, the usability, and the interpretation of that data. That's quality data. But also when it comes to life, we then have to talk about quality life. When you're talking about quality life, we are talking about your health. Not just your physical, but your mental health, your financial health, in all the dimensions of wellness. We're also talking about your joy, your peace, your satisfaction index, your resilience, your ability to face uh, uh, challenges and still remain strong and the ability to bounce back from letdowns. And, and there are other, uh, other types of quality, so forth and so forth. In my research, I saw that there are almost between 7 to 15 types of quality when you're talking about quality, how quality can be defined. But I want to say that we are talking about being a person of quality. And as you are a person of quality, I want to tell you something, that you are a product of a God that created you. Now, if you go to Psalms 139, verse 14, the Bible then says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So I want to say to you that you are not just, you did not just appear, but you were created by a God of highest standards and quality. 
I want to say to you that when God created you, he made you with a, a person of high quality. You are a quality product that came from heaven. You are, not a def you are not deformed in any way. Any deformity that comes to the human family, it is not coming from the God side. It's coming from the human side. But I want you to understand that the author and the producer of the product called me, the product called you, he created you with, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a person, you were created and you were created for quality and you were created to be a quality product, which means you must fulfill your created intent. Am I talking to somebody here? For example, you see the, a man called Gideon in, in the book of Judges. Uh, Gideon, when, uh, when God then appears to him, and, 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 and he starts to talk and to have a conversation with Gideon. Gideon says, I am the, sm I am the least from the smallest tribe. And, 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 but God knew the quality that he had put in that man. And God said, you are a man of valor. You are a great man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But in his own mind, he thought he was the least. He thought he was the smallest. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So a lot of people, they think they are not quality. And they, that's why they then cannot live a quality life. That's why they cannot produce things of quality. Because they have got low self-wealth. They have got low self-esteem. But I am here to announce to somebody that when God created you, he created you. You are fearfully and wonderfully mad. You are created in quality. You are created for quality. And I am here to declare that you are quality. The only thing now that you have to do, you have to start to believe it. You have to start to believe that I am quality. And when you start to believe that you are quality, you are going to start to produce quality. It's going to get good in here. And, 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 and when you're talking about quality data, when you're talking about quality data, Hosea then says in chapter 4 verse 6, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge or lack of knowledge, which means the quality of data that they have is low. And whenever you've got low quality data, low quality information, low quality facts, you actually, you, you are of poor quality. So a lot of people, they, they are struggling in life because of the quality of information that they are using. But it is changing in this place. So when you're talking about the quality of life, what are you talking about? You're talking about the expected standard God has for you. The expected standard God has for you. The expected standard God has for you. And in my search of, 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 of trying to be a person of quality, uh, like I said, that quality uh, is, 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 the, is the results that we see, is, is the marks that you get. It's, it's, it's what you produce, what you exhibit, and what others are then able to perceive with their senses. That's how we judge your quality. Now, when you go to the book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it reads, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Which means that everything in life that you exhibit, every behavior that you uh, act out, every interaction that we, uh, we see is a result of what is in your heart. So whatever is in your heart determines what you come or what you bring outside. So when you are not bringing things of quality, you are just telling us what is in your heart. You are just telling us what is in your heart. We are just telling us what is in your heart. But we now know that the thing is not, the problem is not the product. Because the product called you was fearfully and wonderfully made. But what's muddling and mudding the waters? What, why are you failing to produce things? Now, if you read that verse from the New King's Just Version, it then says, out of the heart springs... Springs, like, like springs of water, just chitupu in Shona, that something just coming out. And so whatever is you, are, you are bringing out to the world, whatever you are bringing out to the marketplace, whatever you are bringing out to ministry is a result of what is in your heart. And if he said it's out of, out of their heart flows, which means things flow out of the inside of you. 
Uh, uh, the, 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 the amplified version says that's where things start. So everything is started in your heart. So when you see a person who does not bath, it did not start from the outside. It started in their heart. If I enter your car and I see your car, it's like as if a, a grenade has gone, yes, 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 this, uh, uh, detonated in, uh, in that car. It's, it's, it's revealing the state of your heart. Are you hearing what? Because everything starts in the heart. When you enter into a ministry like this, when, when you see what you see, it is, it is a reflection on the leader's heart. When you enter into a country, it reflects what is in the heart of the leaders. Because everything springs out from the heart. And when you are talking about quality, quality comes out of the heart. Of the heart. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that if you are going to be a quality person, if you are going to be a quality man, it springs from the heart. You pro, the fruit that you produce will determine the price that you are paid. I, am I talking to somebody? And now the book <coughs> in Matthew chapter 11, verse 35, it then says, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good. No, 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 no. A good person produces good things from the treasure of his good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of his of an evil heart. What is Jesus saying here? He's saying that quality is a heart issue. What are you putting in your heart? And I'm saying to the church in Wisdom City that it is time for us to, to put a demand for quality. Quality life, quality marriage, quality businesses, quality church, quality kids. Everything about us is supposed to be quality. Am I talking to somebody? But your quality is dependent on the type of vessel that you are. Now, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 20 to 21. And it reads, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some of dishonor. In a great house, there are vessels of honor and some of dishonor. Now, I want you to understand here that you are not created to be a vessel of dishonor. Because the, the verse then continues to say, Therefore, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful to the master prepared for every good work. Now I want you to say that the type of vessel that you are, a vessel of honor, a vessel of dishonor, is not determined by God. It is determined by you. You are the one that determines whether you want to become a quality person. I, uh, am I talking? So you said, if you want to become a vessel of honor in a great house, or are, are you hearing what I'm saying? You must cleanse yourself. The word cleanse yourself can mean you must develop yourself. It means you must train yourself. It means you must discipline yourself. So it is what I do in my private life. It is what I do behind the scenes that will determine how I will perform out there. Am I talking to somebody? So a lot of people are blaming God for where they are. But God right here is saying that if, if you are not being honored, it is your problem. If you are not being paid a, a high salary, it is your problem. If you are not being successful, it is your problem. Because in a great house, in a great house like Zimbabwe, in a great house like Africa, your, your, your worth is determined not by things that are around you, but by you, but, but by what is in your heart. So, 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 a lot of people do not understand. What, now, now, what is a vessel? If you go into the dictionary and you start to look up the word called vessel, the word vessel, it, uh, the other words that can uh, 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 stand for vessel is a ship, a ship, a cargo carrier. So it, it means, so a vessel is, is a ship, and that's why the things are, that are carried by a ship are called shipment. So what you carry is, is, what you, is your shipment. It is your cargo. And in life, 
you are being, what you are supposed to bring and, make, and that is going to bring you to honor, that is going to bring you to high levels is your cargo that you carry in your vessel. Am I talking to somebody here? Medically, when you talk about vessels, you are talking about your, 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 your tinga. You are talking about your, 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 the tubes in which your blood moves. It carries. And when there is damage to your blood vessel, you lose your cargo. That's why you bleed to death. When you are stabbed, there's damage to your cargo and you lose what you are carrying and it can kill you and it gives access to bacteria and viruses and they will come and kill you. So I want to say to you that you are a vessel. The question is, what type and what quality of a vessel are you? What quality of cargo are you carrying? And the Bible in Timothy just tells us that the quality of vessel, the quality of your cargo is not determined by God who created the product. But it is determined by you, by what you decide to do with yourself. The level of discipline, the level, the level of learning, the level of being mentored, the level of humility. When you cleanse yourself, you then become a vessel of honor. So the decision to be a vessel of honor is not a God decision. It is a human decision. It is your decision. And today I want you to make a decision that I desire to be a quality person. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, if you go to the book of Romans chapter 9, verse 21, it then goes on to say, it reads like this. Does not the porter have power over the clay from the same lamp to make one vessel for honor and another of dishonor? Now, if you look at that verse, it seems as if the potter, who is God, is the one who is determining what the clay will become. But it's not really what I'm talking about here. What is, and we've just read that what you become is your decision. So God can only work with you to the level of your submission to him. Am I talking to somebody here? Let me repeat that. God can only work with you to the level you have submitted yourself to him. So God can only perform miracles in your life to the level you have submitted your heart, you have submitted your faith, you have submitted your family, submitted. So when you refuse to do what God wants, he is the porter, yes, but he cannot, he, you, you become a vessel of dishonor. And I am calling the church and Wisdom City that we want to become a ministry of honor. We want to become a church of honor. The Bible then says that from the same lamp, from the same lamp, it means, what does that mean to from the same lamp? It means that you might be in the same class, but somebody in the same class will become honorable. Somebody will become a person of dishonor. You can be in the same country. You can be in the same city. You can be in the same church. You can be in the same company. You can be of the same age, same lamp. It also means you can be under the same pastor. You can, you can be in the same family, same father, same mother, same gene pool, same, same exposure. But what you become is determined by the cargo that you decide to carry. The outcome is determined by your heart and, and what determines for you to become a heart, uh, a vessel of honor is, 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 is your decision and how you clean yourself. Seven characteristics of vessels of honor. Seven characteristics of vessels of honor. Number one, a vessel of honor must be born again. There must, it must be a born again vessel. John chapter 3, verse 3, except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5, cannot enter the kingdom of God. And so listen to this. You cannot be a vessel of, of honor and quality in the kingdom of God if you are not born again. Yes, you can come to church. Yes, you can speak church language. Yes, you can, you can act Christian. But if you are not born again, you cannot produce the quality because each fruit, each tree is known by its fruit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I see a lot of people coming to me. Hey, pastor, why is this happening in the church? Why is this thing happening? Why is this thing? I said, listen, it's their fruit. It's telling us the cargo that they carry. So I am not shocked when I see evil things happening. It's people that pretend. It's, it's, they are hypocrites. What is in their heart is what they are producing. Your fruit is as a result of the cargo that you carry. 
Am I talking to somebody? So I am calling to people that are watching that for you to be a quality person, you must be a born again vessel. Number two, you must be a holy vessel. You must be a holy vessel. First Peter chapter 1 verse 16. Because it is written, be holy for I the Lord, I am holy. What is being holy? Holy is to hate evil. What is being holy. Holy is to hate sin, sinful living, filthy living, anything that makes you feel, mm, that makes you feel filthy. You should not do. You must be a vessel of honor. You must be honorable wherever you are. Whether it's at work, at home, where, where, where no one is seeing you, where no one knows you, you still live holy. You must be a vessel of honor. Number three, you must be an informed vessel. You must be an informed vessel. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, For I bear them witness that, that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. If Now listen to this. <laughs> These are people, he was talking about Jews, that they've got zeal for God. He was talking about other religions, they've got zeal for a God. But they've got the zeal that is outside Knowledge. Am I talking to somebody? So, so knowledge is, inf is important. You must be an informed vessel. I like what uh, Bishop Oyo Depo says. He said, if you are informed, uh, if you are misinformed or uninformed, you will be deformed. So a lot of people, their lives are deformed because of lack of knowledge. L their data quality is low. They are misinformed. F so for you to be a vessel of honor, you must be informed. Whatever you are doing, you must be informed. When it is ministry, you must be informed. When it's managing a business, you must be informed. Being a husband, you must be informed. Being a wife, you must be informed. Being a parent, you must be informed. Being a friend, you must be informed. You must be an informed vessel. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, am I talking to somebody here? Let's move on for because of time. And you must be, a, number four, you must be a dedicated vessel. I see a lot of people, they want to bring quality, but they can't because of lack of dedication. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, dedicated, sold out, sold out living. When you're at that job, put your best. When you're serving in anything, put your best. And that's why I say you must excel at your present assignment, a characteristic of a, of, of, of a, of a vessel of honor. Number five, it must be a lead vessel, L-E-A-D, lead vessel. And the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 14, as many are led by the spirit of the Lord, these are the sons of God. So sonship has to do with being led. Are you leadable? Are you leadable? You must hear the voice of God. You must hear the spirit of God. You must, the, the, my sheep, hear my voice. If you are going to be a vessel of honor, you must be, a, be somebody who is able to hear what God is saying. Am I talking to somebody? Number six, you must be an in-faith vessel. In-faith vessel. You must be an in-faith vessel. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 22, so Jesus answered them and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So there's no way you are going to be a vessel of honor and produce the kingdom, the quality that the kingdom requires if you are not in faith. You must be a person that operates, that lives by faith. That's why the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is no way you can be in the kingdom of God and become somebody of significance. Shake the city. Shake Africa when you are not operating by faith. You will have to start to operate your faith. And it is up to you to develop your own faith. God is not going to develop faith for you. The Bible says God gives every man the measure of faith, which means when you are, we all get born again, we get the same standard of faith, the measure of faith. It's a unit of faith that we all get. But you then have the responsibility to develop that faith if you are going to become a vessel of honor. And last, you must be an honoring vessel. An honoring vessel. First Samuel 2 verse 30. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor. And for those who despise me, they will be lightly esteemed. So your level of honor that you show to the people and to the authorities is the same, uh, it determines whether you become a vessel of honor. I am shocked by people who, are, who have been given jobs by, uh, and, and, and work to present themselves and then they are underperform. I am shocked 
I am shocked. I am shocked. Out of all the 7.5 billion people that could employ you, you were employed by this person, gave you an opportunity. Then you do nothing and you go against them. You are, that is dishonor. The Bible says you will be uh, uh, esteemed lightly. You, we, now, we need to be an honoring vessel. You need to be an honoring vessel. You need to be an honoring vessel. Today is Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. Let me just speak to the fathers. And I want to speak first to my father, Bishop Tudor Bismarck. And I want to say thank you, Dad, for standing with us and for being with us. We are so privileged. We are a generation of the privileged, being mentored by the very best. We cannot ask for anything more. We thank you for your love and the time that you spent and you from your busy schedule to see us, to counsel us, to pray for us. And we thank you. May God bless you on this Father's Day. But let me speak to some fathers in this church that you must desire to become a quality father. You must not just be somebody that fathers people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't be an abero. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's a jaw. That's, uh, you know, people know what I'm talking about if you are from Zimbabwe. We don't want aberos in church. We want quality fathers. We want quality fathers. You know what the word father means? The word father, it means, uh, 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 it means source and sustainer. The word, that's the word abba. It means source and sustainer. So when you are a father, you, ma you are a source and a sustainer for your family, for your wife and your kids. None of your kids must suffer. You, which means you must plan, you must work, you must pray, you must push. That's the job of a father. You, are, you must be the provider. You must be honorable. You must, you must be respectable. You must make it easy for your own wife. You must make it easy for your own kids and the neighborhood to respect you because of the type of quality that you are as a man and as a father. Am I speaking to somebody here? You don't bring embarrassment to your family. Don't bring embarrassment to your wife. Don't bring embarrassment to your kids. One of Ambirakupi. We need fathers that are quality people. And we want people of quality. Am I talking? Whether you are a man or a woman, God wants you to be a quality person. And, 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 and for you to become a quality person, it is your own determination. You have to clean yourself. You have to make yourself a vessel of honor. So my prayer today is that May Wisdom City become a quality ministry. My prayer today is that may we be committed to quality. My prayer for today is that may my heart be a quality heart. That whatever I produce, whatever I bring, in ministry, whatever I bring in the marketplace, may it be something of quality. I pray that I may produce quality fruit, fruit that remains, that I may produce quality, that whatever I do, I may be a person of quality. When I speak, let me speak quality. When I think, let me think quality. When I plan, let me plan quality. When I organize, let me organize quality. When I start a business, let that business be quality. When I am working in the marketplace, let me be known for quality. I must be a person of quality. May my life represent the quality that God desires from my heart. In the name of Jesus, may Wisdom City become a quality church. And as we become quality, we will see that we will rise to the top. Oh yes, we'll become vessels of honor. We'll become honored in the city. We'll become honored in the country. We'll become honored wherever you are. And when you are honored, you are paid well. When you are honored, you are given your seat. When you are honored, you are well. All things will be well with you. Desire to be a quality person in Jesus' mighty name. Until we meet next week, desire quality. Be quality in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.